In the third learning outcome, we will look at the production of nitrogenous waste. Okay, ammonia is the product of oxidative deamination from amino acid, and their level is very low, which is about 30 to 60 micromolar, because it is a potent neurotoxin. So what do we do is to convert the toxic ammonia into the non-toxic urea in our liver. And because ammonia is very toxic, they are transported to our liver in the form of amino acids, which are glutamine and alanine. So in most tissues, including our skeletal muscle, the ammonia can be combined with glutamic acid to form glutamine. So again, for your information, glutamic acid is an amino acid, while glutamine is another amino acid. So this reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme glutamine synthetase. And in the second reaction, again, the muscle has the enzyme to combine ammonia with pyruvate forming alanine. And therefore, both glutamine and alanine for this reason are known as the nitrogen transporter because they transport nitrogen to the liver. While the ammonia group will then be cleaved off from the alanine and glutamine in our liver so that they can be converted into urea via the urea cycle. Okay, you probably have encountered this before when your sweat smells like ammonia. The top reason might be due to dehydration. As a result, the ammonia got concentrated in your body or it could be also happen when you are low on carbohydrates combined with very heavy physical exercise. And due to the lack of carbohydrates, your body starts to break down protein. So by right, your liver should be able to remove all those nitrogen as urea. But sometimes when it surpasses its capacity, you will get ammonia excreted in your sweat. Okay, I have attached this video in your MLE. So please watch this video and compare the video with the diagram over here. In a nutshell, this is how the urea cycle looks like. So in your mitochondria, the carbon dioxide produced will combine with water molecule forming the bicarbonate ions. And then it will combine with ammonium ion to form carbamoyl phosphate molecule. So wait a minute, where do we get the phosphate molecule coming from? Well, they are from ATP. Because if you look at the previous slide, this process will involve the investment of two ATPs. So it is a form of substrate level phosphorylation as you have the direct addition of a phosphate group from the ATP molecule. And then carbamoyl phosphate will combine with ornithine forming citrulline, which is then transported out of the mitochondria into the cytosol. So for information, both citrulline and ornithine are amino acids but they are not used in making any proteins. Citrulline then reacts with aspartate or aspartic acid forming arginosuccinate. And then arginosuccinate will be cleaved to form arginine. So you can see that a few mare is cleaved from the arginosuccinate forming another amino acid arginine. And upon hydrolysis, arginine will be turned into urea while the leftover will be converted back into ornithine, which can then be recycled back in the urea cycle. So I hope this is clear so far to you. In fact, urea comprises up to 90% of our nitrogen waste in the urine, which could be as low as 12 mg up to 20,000 mg per day. So that is all depending on our diet. So because urea is non-toxic, it can be safely transported in the bloodstream to our kidneys, which will be finally excreted in urine. And there are also other types of nitrogen waste in our urine, such as urine acid that is related to gout arthritis. And you of course will get some free ammonia as well as creatinine, which is the breakdown product from muscle tissues. Normally, our liver has a high capacity in terms of the urea cycle, which is well surpassing the ammonia production. But sometimes one can get hyperammonemia due to defects in their liver 
or genetic mutation. So don't forget that ammonia is a neurotoxin, so it can be dangerous to our central nervous system, leading to encephalopathy, slurring of speech, and so on. And these are the main causes of hyperammonemia, which could be viral hepatitis like hepatitis A, B, C. It could be also due to alcoholic liver disease or cirrhosis, which is a scarring of the liver, or it could be due to genetics. And now let's try to sum up everything. Here is your amino acid pool, which is 100 gram in a healthy person. So where do we get these amino acids coming from? It is mainly from our diet, or it could be the turnover from body proteins, or sometimes we can actually produce the non-essential amino acids ourselves. So what is the function of amino acid? Well, they can be used to make nitrogen compounds such as proteins, neurotransmitter, nucleic acids, and so on. And sometimes during starvation, we break down amino acid to produce energy. And to do that, we have to split or catabolize the amino acid into two components, which are the carbon skeletons and the ammonium ions. So it's only with the carbon skeleton we can use that for energy production through your conventional Krebs cycle or the TCA cycle. Now, how about the ammonium? Because it is a toxic compound, it must be converted into the urea within the urea cycle. Okay, so I hope you are all clear with the concept of amino acid and proteins. And here is the summary for this session. You can read it for yourself. Thank you.